On this episode of The Layover Live, Paul McLeod stops by to talk the new Google Analytics 4. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 149 of The Layover Live, where we bring you the top article from The Layover each week. I'm Jason Swick, VP of Strategy and Insights, and I'm joined today by our very own Director of Analytics, Paul McLeod. So, Paul, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, Jason? Glad Good, to be man. here. Good, uh, man. Yes, happy to have you here as well. And I know if you're on, we're talking either data or analytics or a combination thereof. And so the theme of our show today is centered around the new Google Analytics 4 platform. And our article of the week uh, talks about just that. It comes from towardsdatascience.com, gives us a nice introduction into some of the new things to expect, which we'll be talking about on the show today. Uh, so check it out, it's a really, really good article. Now, I think it's important to note that Google has had two separate you know, measurement platforms, I think, for a long time now. The first is Google Analytics, which most of us are all familiar with. Um, out there and that's been around for about 15 years or so and then a few years ago they came out with Google Analytics for Firebase for mobile apps to really help manage that uh, ecosystem and the two have been kind of starting to blend together over the years and uh, now this presented some challenges I think for though a lot of us out there is Google Analytics and Firebase they had different UIs and Firebase even had some features like funnels which all of us would have hoped to have seen in Google Analytics and GA4 does provide that, and we'll get into that a little bit as well. So now we fast forward to today, and we have the new GA4 platform, which is essentially a new platform, both inside and out. In short, it's a combination of Universal GA and Firebase with some exciting new features all mashed into one. Now to utilize this, you are likely going to have to implement some new tags as the data model is, is a little bit different, and Paul will get into that a little bit. Uh, and in addition to the new data model, there is a new UI, new reports and some new features worth bringing to all of your attention. So here to talk about that is Paul McLeod. And Paul, let's just jump right into it. Um, first and foremost, tell us a little bit about Google Analytics 4 and maybe what's different with this compared to the older version. Yeah, I mean, I think what they're doing here is they've um, uh, they've taken this opportunity to sort of update a whole bunch of different things at once. It's not just one change, it's, you know, uh, Google Analytics version three um, had been well over a decade as sort of the standard way to track um, certainly non-enterprise level websites, you know, not super huge ones. Um, and it was this time for, you know, people, marketers were thinking differently and doing different things. So it made sense to change the tracking tools in a lot of different ways. Um, some of the highlights are, um, that it's just uh, the way it sort of uh, the 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 focus of um, how analysis is done is shifted from sessions and pages and actions and back to users, um, which is a big change from the way DMOs uh, think of things. Um, so rather than uh, thinking about you know how many uh, how many page views I had or how many clicks I had or how many sessions I had necessarily, what you're going to be thinking about is how many, or, or what Google Analytics 4 is designed to help you do is understand how many users um, did the actions that I want and how what's their life cycle um, across, uh, you know, what's their life cycle like uh, across different interactions, across different devices, um, rather than just looking at individual sessions, which honestly is what we usually report on nowadays in DMOs. Um, there are a bunch of other changes too, though, and we can go into those, um, including things with uh, how it's uh, coded you can um, uh, you know event tracking happens without uh, any code updates um, there are connections to Google BigQuery that are really cool and there are new options for um, uh, AI and machine learning within the tool um, and those are just a few of the highlights yeah let's uh, well let's even like talk about that a little bit too because uh, I mean that's a good overview about again they kind of have these two properties there right you had web and app properties for a while and then you had Universal Analytics, and there were two different UIs, and now they've kind of started to mash these things together. It's exciting. Uh, they brought a lot of the features, I think, also from GA360, which is Google's paid version of analytics, over into the platform, which is cool now. So maybe, you know, what are you most excited about then, I think, Paul, as it comes to, like, functionality or features? Maybe sharing, you know, a handful of those um, and how – maybe maybe even just the best ones you think would help destination marketers out there because there's, there's a lot of new features and then new stuff coming down the pipeline too. So maybe talk about – some of the, of the features you're most excited about. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so the user, the shift to thinking about users rather than pages or sessions is certainly interesting. Um, for DMOs, you know, something like three quarters of all sessions are the first one that that user has ever had on our websites. Uh, now, part of that is different devices. You know, um, in Google Analytics, regular Google Analytics, the version we've had, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that it was the same person from phone to their desktop, whereas Google is tapping into more stuff on the back end now to connect those ideas. Um, so maybe we'll see that users are maybe spending a little bit more time on our device, on our uh, things, on our sites. Um, and then also, you know, with the way you can now track more easily uh, web sites and apps together, um, if you're a DMO with an app, maybe you can start to see uh, interactions and customer journeys across those two things. Um, so that'll be interesting to explore just what that effect is. Is there more uh, repeat visitation and use than we see in the standard uh, Google Analytics uh, 3? Um, apart from that, um, I am also excited just to have more, um, uh, more out of the box, uh, in-depth user tracking on things like scrolling and clicking and so forth. Um, we set up a lot of those things for our clients, but it's now going to be, um, sort of standardized across all websites and it'll be there, um, out of the box. So hopefully we can get better, um, insights that way. Um, and then, um, you know, those are the main things. I'm also just curious, you know, everybody, AI has been a buzzword for like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years now. Um, I'm curious to see if uh, their AI insights uh, yield anything. And, you know, I personally don't do um, a ton of uh, uh, ad setup, ad buying uh, uh, with Google ads or anything, but there are tools for building audiences out of Google Analytics and then uh porting them over to Google ads is huge. And I know a lot of people with our company do that. And so um, hopefully they get a lot more uh, effectiveness and use out of that ability going forward. Yeah, yeah, really good features. I think that's one of the ones, Paul, that I'm excited about too, is is some of the real-time audiences, custom dimensions now that are there. Um, and then some others that I'm thinking about too, things like, um, you know, s sequencing segments, um, you know, how long did it take for someone to like complete a form? Those are things that you couldn't, you couldn't have those before those conditions like time. Yeah, exactly. Those are the kind of things that are just tracked now. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good stuff. And then some things with conversion tracking, right? Like before we had 20 goals, I think with the, with the new one out of the box, you'll get 30 goals and you can also archive those, which frees up slots for later, which has been a pain point for, for a lot of, uh, a lot of SEOs out there as, as uh, goals were kind of locked into that, sp that space. And, and then things around their analysis module, right? Uh, which was something that was available before uh, in Google Analytics 360, but is now available in GA4. That includes uh, is some of the things you already mentioned, some um, you know better uh, scroll tracking, better pathing audience segments. You can do funnel analysis now, which wasn't available before. So there's a lot of really, really good features that are, that are worth tying into. So I think the next question that, that is going to be on people's minds, right? So we've talked about uh, some of the differences really quickly, some of the features that stand out. Um, you know, the next question is, okay, how can I start using this? So have we started using this for, for our clients um, and um, and for those out there who maybe aren't our clients, uh, you know, what can they do to prepare for this? Yeah, so um, anytime you have a new tracking tool like this, there's a little bit of, a, there's a little bit of friction in switching over in that, um, you know, when you set up, uh, so just to describe the process, you have to set up a new property uh, for Google Analytics 4, you got to get the tracking uh, code, and then you got to put it on your website. Um, and then even once you do that, then you have to wait for the data to come in. So your new Google Analytics 4 property will not have access to any of the information that's in your existing Google Analytics 3. So for a year there, if you're doing year-over-year -year comparisons, which DMOs should be doing because of the seasonal uh uh, nature of our uh, data, um, you're going to be sort of switching between tools and so forth. So what we've uh, started doing is um, deploying the Google Analytics 4 code um, for our clients um, alongside the existing Google Analytics code. So you don't have to change anything with your reporting or your um, your standard metrics immediately. Um, I would imagine Google will give us a good long time before they really shut down the existing Google Analytics. Um, but uh, we can start going ahead and tracking in the new system so that we can do those comparisons um, as soon as possible going forward. Yeah, great. And thanks for that insight too. And I think it's good for, for folks to know out there um, so that they know they're covered. And again, if there's any question, just reaching out to your analyst or reaching out to your um, customer success representative to, to ask those questions sooner than later is a good idea. 
Um, but as, as most of these things come about, we're usually ahead of the curve on a lot of these things and our team's been working on that for a while. So that brings me up to the next thing then. So now we've, you know, we've talked about what it is, some of the new features we talked about, how it's going to get implemented now, maybe some resources, right? Because as these new things come out and, and there being a, a, um, now a new UI, a new data model, a bunch of new features, what are some resources then, Paul, that maybe DMOs can use to learn more about uh, Google Analytics for? Yeah, um, there are... This is the kind of thing that um, gets uh, a lot of content made about it. Um, anytime you have a, a big new development for online marketers, you can expect those online marketers to write blog posts and do webinars about it um, because that's literally what they do. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of great things. Um, you shared with me a really good uh, video from uh, CXL that describes the new data in, uh, Google Analytics and uh, provides some information along that. Um, I have really enjoyed, uh, there's a towards data science blog. I think you all so mentioned for me that has some of the main features in it. Um, search engine land, which I come from the SEO world. So, um, uh, from that end, they wrote up a nice, um, last October, actually, they wrote up a nice, um, overview of the changes and, uh, what's going on there. And then I also, um, you know, like I said, every, uh, Every digital marketer worth his salt wants to write about this thing. I mean, look, here we are doing the same thing. Um, right. yeah, but uh, there was a company, Rad Interactive. I have no idea what this agency is or how great they are, um, but they're from San Diego, and they had a really nice blog post that did well in Google um, that described these. And I think it is good to look at a few different resources because um, there's so much changing. It's really just a whole new version of the thing that um, their different marketers will focus on different um, aspects of the new system. So if you read a few articles, you might uh, get a more holistic picture of what's available. Yeah, you're right. And it also depends on if your DMO is more focused transactionally or informationally, you're going to look at things different. So I, I do like your idea of looking at multiple resources and, you, and finding the ones that work for you. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, a lot of these changes are more sort of customer lifecycle transaction focused, which is uh, something maybe DMOs should be, you know, a little bit more focused on, but with the way we historically measure our websites, um, so there will be different focuses for a lot of people. Yeah, very, very, very true. Um, and, uh, but you know, a good place to start was what you had mentioned, which I shared around with the team, which was from CXL.com. Uh, just do a search on there for, uh, you know, Google analytics for properties. Charles Farina from AdsWerve does a really, really good job of, of doing kind of a walkthrough with that. Um, I also think in the coming month or so, I'd imagine we'll do our own webinar on this where we'll do a deeper dive into the back end of the platform, start to show some folks some of the things it can do as well. But in the meantime, if you're looking on brushing up on your skills for analytics, that's a good place to start. So Paul, thanks for coming on and, and sharing these insights. Um, it's an exciting time. It's uh, incorporating a lot of features from uh, Google's uh, analytics paid version, bringing a lot of that in, mashing up some of the, the, the new functionality uh, and analysis tools that were available on um, the Firebase side of the house and bringing those things together. So if anything, we should be getting some better insights into what potential travelers are doing for our destination so we can make those proper decisions. So thanks for coming by totally. and sharing a lot of that information. It's appreciated. Absolutely. You bet. And thanks for tuning in each and every week. If you're not subscribed, please do so now. We're also available on Spotify and iTunes if you want to consume us through audio podcasts. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.